God will treat you exactly the way you talk about him. He will treat you exactly the way you talk about him. That's what he did with the Israelites in Numbers 13 and 14. They said, oh, would to God that we had all died. We should have died over there. Why? Because you brought us out here uh, to kill us, and you're going to kill our children, and you're going to and our wives, and all, it's going to be bad. And you did, and God, and because remember they had just come back out of uh, the Promised Land, the the twelve spies came back, and ten of them said, "Oh, it's bad. You know, it's beautiful. It's great, man. Great food, but the people are big. They're like giants, and we're like grasshoppers in their sight." Notice, he said, they said we're like grasshoppers in their sight, and then it says, and because of that. We're grasshoppers in our own sight. So their problem was how they saw themselves. The problem wasn't the giants, right? And they said, there's walled cities and it's a great place. And they said, we can't do this. And then God said, you brought up an evil report. And he said, here's what's going to happen. Uh, you are going to, I sent those spies out, the 10, I, the 12, sent them all out. But two came back, Joshua and Caleb came back. And the 10, they spent 40 days in the promised land searching things out. And when they came back, they said, we can't do it. It's too big. It's, it's, they're too tough for us. And then you got Joshua and Caleb. Actually, Joshua, did, it didn't say how much he said. He didn't, didn't, didn't say a lot. Caleb was like, we are well able. Let's go up and take the land at once. Let's do it. Right? And that was when he was 40. Then 80 years later, he goes, you know what? It's just like it was today. Just like it was back then. I'm still well able. I can still do it at 80. In other words, I'm just as good as I was at 40. Amen. So let's go take this thing. Right? And so now notice, and then God told them. He said, you, what you said about me, what you whispered about me into my ear, I heard it. And he said, and that's exactly what I will do for you. You said you would die in the wilderness. Guess what? You're going to die in the wilderness. And you and everybody from 20 years old and up, you're going to die out in the wilderness. I'm not going to hold your sin to your kids. Right? He said, your kids are going to get through this, but you won't. And it's going to be one day in the wilderness for one year in the wilderness for every day that you were in the promised land. And so 40 days, you're going to, and you're going to die out there. And he said, why? Because this is what you said about me. And I will be to you exactly how you talk about me. Now, that is not saying that God killed him. Now, what, it's, what all God was trying to say is he cannot do any more for you than what you say he can. So when you say, God, why did you let this happen? He goes, whoa, <laughs> hands up, wasn't me. You know, why did well, you let it happen then? Well, maybe you didn't do it, but you let it happen. I didn't let it happen. Why did you let it happen? I gave this world to you. This, you're in dominion over this world, not me. Now, if you want me to help you fix it, tell me. I'll help you. I'll, I will lend my power to you to allow you to fix this situation. But if all you're going to do is stand there and gripe about it, guess what? Whatever you say, you will have whatever you say. And then, he, then Jesus reiterated that in Mark eleven twenty three. 23. It's the same principle all the way through. So the, one of the things you've got to learn is how do you talk about God? Because God's already said, here's how I want you to talk about me. I want you to know me as Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides. I want to be that to you. Call me that. He said, this is the name I want you to go. I want you to, every time, see, when we say Jehovah Jireh, we hear the, the Hebrew name. God hears the words. Our God who provides for us. That's what they were saying. Oh, Jehovah Jireh, God, you who provide for us. That, and he said, that's who I want to be to you. Jehovah, I want to be Jehovah Rapha. Who? The God who heals you. Yeah, okay. But instead, God, why don't you heal me? He said, what can I do with that? See, he, you're not saying anything. Right? It doesn't apply to him. But when you call him what he is, and you speak to him the way he is, you get who he is. He gets to be what you call him. He gets to be that to you. Amen? And I, it's amazing. I have people that, I don't believe this stuff. I don't, guess what? It shows. <laughs> it shows. Right? Because right, you're the ones always needing help. Calling, doing something. Right? And you know what? I got people telling me, now listen, y'all know me, hopefully by now, well enough to know that you know, the, I told some people the other day that when we were up in Wisconsin, they were asking some stuff about it. So I answered some questions. And they said, you know, uh, where do you stand on finances and money, that kind of stuff? And I said, look, as far as I'm concerned, I said, number one, I've told my family, I've told my staff, we never make a decision based on money. 
we make a decision based on the will of God. We discover the will of God, then we go that direction. If we need money to get it done, God provides the money. But we don't make a decision, oh, we don't have enough to do that, so forget that. We don't do it that way. Now, what I told him, I said, but people, my personal philosophy on that is super simple. I tell everybody, it's like a boat. The, it doesn't matter how deep the ocean is, right? The boat floats. Now, if the, if the ocean gets really shallow, as long as, I don't care if there's a thousand foot of water between the bottom and the boat, you know, the bottom, the, the ocean bottom or the boat, or 10 foot, it don't matter. Boat's still floating. Isn't that right? So it doesn't matter if you got a thousand dollars or ten dollars. As long as you're floating, you're good. That's the way I look at everything. As long as we're floating, we're good. As long as I can get to the next place I'm supposed to preach, as long as I can help support missionaries and help build Bible schools and do that, I, I'm good, right? My needs are met. I, I've, I haven't prayed for my needs in years. I do, I don't, because I don't spend my time talking to God, telling him about my needs. He knows my needs. He's my provider. He supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. So I don't, I don't talk about that. I expect him to supply my needs. I, it does not say, if you beg me, I'll supply your needs. I believe his word, and he does it, and I never have to talk to him about it. Amen? This is a, it's, an easy, it's a good way to live. And so my, the pressures I get have nothing to do with me. It has to do with other people. It has to do with you know, different things. It has nothing to do with me. Why? Because God meets my needs. And the way I found it is I make other people's needs my needs. And when I do that, their needs get met. And I get to meet them. Right? Because God pours it through me. But it's the same thing that you have to learn that it's not how much you have. See, a wealthy person is not the person that has the most money stacked up. Because it can be gone in a day or worthless in a day. The wealthy person is a person that knows that whatever they need, they can get their hands on it because God will provide it whenever they pray. That's true wealth, and nobody can do that. Nobody can uh, take away from that, right? So I build up treasure in heaven, right? What does that mean? It means I, I, my treasure in heaven is not things. It's my trust in God. Can I trust him to meet my needs? And every day, I trust him more. Amen? And because of that, we see more of what God does. And this is, and now, you say, what does that got to do with renewing the mind? Everything. <laughs> Why? Because my mind, and I'm not saying it's totally renewed in that area, but it's moving that direction. It's definitely more renewed than it used to be. Yeah. And the more, here's a, well, here's a good thing. You say, I don't know if I want to do that. I don't know if I want to put this much time into this mind renewal and all the stuff you're talking about. Let me tell you, the peace that comes with your mind being renewed is worth every minute of the process, just knowing that you have peace. Because the more your mind is renewed, the more you keep your mind on Him, He keeps you in perfect peace. Amen? Amen. It's a good way to... We would like to stay connected with you and give you an opportunity to become a member, therefore allowing...